Good morning, afternoon and evening my crazies and my name's Angela and I'm the crazy poppy lady and welcome to January's cow. Now for this one we will be making this humongous guy here um, which is our moose loose about this house. I still can't do it. It's meant to be in Scottish but it just doesn't roll off my tongue well. Right well anyway and for our gorgeous moose he is massive so he would look really really good as a um, floor blanket or a play mat just down to the size of him um, if you are thinking actually I need him for a single bed um, <coughs> oh, sorry keep an eye out at the end of the video I'm working on something to be able to extend top and bottom for you so he will fit all right so uh, let's get on to the information for you now I'm going to do it a little bit different today I'm going to tell you the box width and height so that then if you're running with a different size yarn to me so sort of, I, I did mine in a DK um, but if you're running in a different size yarn sort of the threes, the fours, the heavies, whatever then you will know this is how big your box is going to be and then you can do your math from there to see if it takes over the bedroom or not right so he is a 53 squares long by 53 squares wide at the moment he is a solid square and for those of you that like to go old school and we have got him in at 35 inches squared so that's top going up and 35 inches along and then if you're in centimeter if you work in centimeters that is 89 centimeters long and 89 centimeters wide say I did tell you big project now the yarn I actually used for this was the Audi yarn because I am trying to use it all up so that in future tutorials I will be using a different brand of yarn that more of you will be able to get hold of so the Audi DK is a decent thick um, DK weight yarn so it's a little bit thicker than the Stylecraft okay um, now it, as I said it's a UK DK it's a US size 3 and an Australian 8 ply now I'm hoping I've covered everybody if not tell me in the comments down below and I will try and find the variation and the coding and stuff for your country or if you already know it put it down and help a girl out right so I've already used up my colours of yarn so I can't actually show you what they were I did do the video at the beginning but then I realised when I was editing that I forgot to add in the black the white and one of the blues so <laughs> I was just babbling for babbling sake which is me at the moment isn't it right, right so the colours that you're going to need to make this guy I'm going to do them in DK you will have to transfer them out to whatever yarn weight you're going to use right so for our white we are going to need 200 grams which is approximately 600 meters and then for our black it's 800 grams approximately 300 meters then our light brown and and the dark brown okay is a hundred grams which is 300 meters and the light blue and dark blue which are the section for the hearts are 50 grams approximately each color now what I've done is I have rounded everything up so there is no worry about you playing yarn chicken you are going to have a bit of each of it left actually you may have quite a nice amount of it left so that you'll be able to use the extras for your border choices um, later on in the project right so now that's the main part of your shopping list done um, I will leave you for a few minutes I do run upstairs or downstairs or into that yarn room or through those boxes to try and find the yarn that you're going to need hopefully you've got some in if not I will see you shortly when you get back from shopping. Stay safe. Good morning, afternoon and evening my crazies. My name's Angela and I'm the Crazy Poppy Lady. And I would like to welcome you to January's um, crochet along which is a moose loose about this house 
Um, sorry, I couldn't resist. I was very tempted to sing that tune that was on a sweet commercial back in the 80s. And some of you are probably already singing it in your head. Sorry. You're also going to need a few stitch markers. Um, I'm using a 4.5 millimeter hook with a DK yarn, but you can change that to what suits you or suits the yarn that you're using. You're also going to need a darning needle and a pair of scissors. Right, so now let's get started. What we're going to be doing is I'm making a slip knot. Popping that onto your hook. Now we are going to be chaining five. Now I'm going to be working in American terms today because that's how I learned so it's easier for me. Right, so we will be using chain stitches and double crochets. If you're in the UK, that is the chain stitches and trebles. Right, so let's carry on. So we've got our chain of five in. So we're going to be placing a double crochet into our third chain from the hook. So we hook over, place our hook through the chain, hook over, pull through, hook over, pull through two loops, hook over and pull through the remaining two. Now we're going to hook over again and we are going to place a, another double crochet into the next chain and a final double crochet into the last chain. So that is your very first block made and your very first row complete. It's that simple. Now for each time that you need to do um, an increase, you'll always do it at the end of your work. And to do that, you're going to chain up five. Now we are going to tilt our work slightly so that the square that you've made is pointing downwards. You're going to work into the top of the chain and you're going to do your three double crochets again starting at the third chain from the hook. Let's pop in. That's number one. Two. And three. Now this does look very alien because you're sitting there thinking, hold on a minute. That's not going to match, but it is because what we're going to do is we are going to tip this one 180 degrees and we are going to join the two squares through that chain two space. Just there. So you've got your, you've got your chain two here and then you've got your three stitches and we are just going to slide a hook through and bring up a slip stitch. OK, so that is your first square here for your first row and your first square there for your second row. Now we will be chaining up two. And this is the amount of chains that you will do for every single square unless you're increasing or decreasing. So we've got our chain two on done and now we are going to place three double crochets in um, around the chain two here, okay? There you go. So that is the end of your second block on your second row. OK, so now let's move on to row three. For that, we are going to chain up five. And repeat the start from row two, which is tilting your work slightly, working into the top of the chain and starting at the third chain from the hook. We will place a double crochet. Then a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. And then the last one into the fifth. And so again, that block will have 
we chain two and then three double crochets. Now we tip our work again. So we tilt it upwards 180 degrees and we place our slip stitch around that chain two spot. Now we chain two. Sorry, I'll just move my camera back. There we go, we chain two. And now this is where it can get a bit fiddly. So I like to fold down the squares that I'm not quite work, ready to work on. It keeps it out of the way of the hook. So now we'll place our three double crochets around that chain two. And then slip stitch into the top of your next square which is around the chain chain up two and then three double crochets around the chain now if you're having issues on remembering how to how to create the chain work to go up and increase and just scoot the video back a little bit um, to the start of either row two or row three. Now you will always be increasing on the first square of each row and then you will also decrease but we'll get to the decreasing shortly. Right, so for the mousse pattern, you will now need to do 19 rows of white. Once you've completed 19 rows of white, which will have the increase on the first square of every row, come back to me and we'll get on with the next section, which is uh, starting to work on the colour blocks. I'll see you shortly. Okay, so here we are back at the end of row 19. Now this is the last um, row of complete solid colour that we'll be doing for quite a while. So for this row, you will have been working down your work and you will have 19 blocks. Another little tip is so that if you do put your work down um, at any point during this project, which I'm not being horrible, we're bound to because it's quite a large one. Pop a stitch marker in row 10, um, in the corner of row 10 once you've laid your work out so that you know that your work is laying this way. So one stitch marker for um, your working yarn is at the bottom. You have your tail from the beginning on the left hand side or right if you're left handed. Um, and then your, your uh, stitch marker for your row 10 will be in the block on row 10 on the left hand side if you're right handed and the right hand side if you're left handed oh this gets confusing but other than that we are now ready to move on to a row 20. right so for row 20 our first eight blocks are going to be white so meet me back here once you've done seven of those eight blocks and I will show you how to change your colour on the eighth block. Right, so you've finished your block number seven. So we're now going to be working on to block eight. But before we do block eight, I like to be a bit cheeky. I like to put this the strand of yarn that I'm going to be working onto my finger so I can use it straight away. Right, so I like to have my non-working yarn attached to my uh, next finger down from the one that I normally hold in but everyone has a different ways doing it right so we're going to chain up two and we're going to place our three double crochets in as normal oops sorry and that is where our white will then stop because what we're going to do is we're going to pop our hook through our chain as we would normally do but instead of using our white we are going to pop on the black okay and then we are going to pull the black through and and finish stitch off as a slip stitch okay now we are going to chain up two 
give your black and your white a gentle tug nothing too major okay now we drop our white so at this point i like to move it out the way and hook it behind now working over your tail saves a bit of sewing later on but i like to work over my tail and over the chain and then i place three double crochets into that block like that and so remember if when you go to change your yarn you use the new color in place of the old color on the slip stitch and then when you just carry on building your blocks as normal in the new color and then once you've done that one and drop the remaining unworkable yarn um, to the back for now and we will sew that in a couple of times right so and now for the back to the pattern so for the pattern we need to do four black blocks and then we go back to working the white so I'll do that one with you It's a cheeky way of uh, showing you the change in colour again, isn't it? Now this is pretty much the method throughout on changing colours. You will be using the slip stitch to change the colour. Right, so you've done your four blocks, but before completing your fourth block, you are going to bring in another ball of white okay and then we are going to attach that like we did previously so as you saw there i popped a slip knot on my finger i'm going to place my hook through grab the white make sure it's nice nice and secure on the hook pull it through pull it through the black and then chain two and that is it All right and now we grab our tail again working over our tail we will do three double crochets around the tail and the chain and then slip stitch into your next block and then carry on working to the end now you should have a block count of eight when you get to the top i will see you there in a minute right everybody so this is a row number 20 so for this row you will be working up your work you will need to do eight white four black so we're adding in our first color of black and then we are going to do eight white now at this point i like to add in my stitch markers so that i know which is front ways and which ways back and what's upside down and around the right way so what i do is when i lay out my work i make sure that my last row is going up okay so that is my number 20. now i am going to place a marker in the corner of box 20. okay it doesn't quite matter where in that box just so that it's in there okay so that when you've got a visual you know that that is up and the other way is down and another one I like to do is I like to place another one on box number uh, number 10 going up. So then there's absolutely no confusion. I can look down. I can see that I've got two stitch markers here. So that is 1 to 10. That is 10 to 20. That means if you do have to pull anything out, you know you don't need to pull it. If you know that you're accurate up to this point, you don't have to pull any more back like I've had to do today right so and now let's get on with row 21 right so now we're working on to row 21 for this a row you're going to need to get ready with your dark blue or the shade that you've chosen for your dark hearts I shouldn't really call it that should I right but anyway and we'll prime that and we'll be grabbing that shortly right so we are going to do eight white and then one black just the one black and then before joining the black meet me back here and i will show you the next step 
Right, so now we're going to be working into a block number nine. So for this one, we need to move our yarn over um, because we will be working with the black. Okay, right. So to do this, what you're going to do is you are going to place your hook around the chain as normal, hook over your black, pull that through and pull it so it is in line with where you want the edge of your box to be. Pull it through the white and then adjust chain up too. Now we are going to work over the white chain and the black strand for a box count of three. And just like that. Now don't worry about this white one here because as we work the next row along, like coming back on ourselves, we will be pulling this white yarn and it will tighten up as we go. All right, now we are going to add on our blue. Okay, so as before, pop your hook through, pop your slip knot on, pull your blue yarn through, chain up two, work over, your blue yarn and the chain top chain two and then finish that square off with your slip stitch oh. see nice and simple and nice and easy once you get going now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave you to carry on with this row and change colours as and when you need to um, and I will give you the box count in a few moments. Oh pants, I've just broken my camera stand, don't panic, new one's on order, it just means that I won't be able to zoom in and zoom out anymore. Um, but luckily for us, this project's at the size now where you'll be able to see pretty much all of the work, which is really cool. All right, so let's get back to the box count. Okay, so here we are for row 21. Now for this one, you are working down your work. You are going to need to do eight white, one black, add in your color C, which is your dark blue. So we will do a three dark blue, add in a black, so we will need to do another square of black and then finish it off with eight white. So let me say that again for you. It is eight white, one black, four colour C, which is your dark blue, one black and eight white. Right, here we are for row 22. For row 22, you're working up your work. You will need to do five white, four black, Four colours C, which is your dark blue, and then we have a one black, and then we have eight whites. Right, so here we are back for row 23. For this, you are working down your work. You will need to do a nine white. Four colour C, which is your dark blue, a one black. Four colour A, which is your light blue one black and five white. Right, so here we are back for row 24. For that, you are going to be working up your work. You will need to do six white, four color A, a one black, three C, a one black, and then nine white. Here we are for row 25. For row 25, you're going to work down your work. You are going to need to do a 10 white, two black, two color C, four color A, and then five black and ending in two white. Right, so here we are back for row 26. Now with row 26, you are going to be adding in um, a, a colour C, 
another two black and your light brown okay so that's why i've got my strands sitting on the front here so i remember <laughs> right anyway let's get on with your box count for this one right so you are going to need to do two white one black three color c which is your dark blue one black um four color a which is your light blue and one black one c one black and now we are on to our light brown and um, so that's one light brown a one black and then finish it off with 10 white right so here we are back for row 27 for this one you are working down your work and you will need to do 11 white and two brown which is your light brown two dark blue two black two light blue one black four and dark blue and three white right here we are back for row 28 for this one you are working up your work you are going to need another ball of black and another ball of light brown right so your box count for this one is three white one black four dark blue two light blue one black one brown light brown one black one dark blue one black one brown one black and finished up with 11 white right so here we are for row 29 now on row 29 you are going to be losing uh, this color c and on uh, one of the blacks so get ready with your scissors right i'm just gonna trim those off give myself enough room uh, enough to sew in and right so now for your uh, box count for row 29 for this one you are working down your work you're going to do, need to do 12 whites one black one light brown two black two light brown two light blue one black four dark blue and four white now remember you're cutting off that black and you're cutting off that blue move um keep those balls to one side because you're gonna need them again for that when you're coming up this side we are back for row 30 now with row 30 we are going to need a small amount of black here just for two squares because then we will be picking up the third square this is why i've got a start and a finish here we are also going to be able to cut off one of our light blues another black and a cut off one of the browns as you get to it right so our box count for this one will be right so we'll be working from the bottom we will need to do four white one black two dark blue add in your black do two black pick up the black um so in total you will have three black boxes and then you will do a one light blue one black four brown which means we can then get rid of the brown and the black and then we will do a one black and then you will finish it off with 13 white okay so i'm going to say that again for you there is four white one black two dark blue a three black one light blue a one black four light brown one black and 13 white So here we are back for row 31 now for row 31 we are going to be cutting off a black and moving it further up your project and we'll also be adding in another light brown so our box count for this one is 14 white four light brown three black two light brown one black two dark blue finish it up with five white
Right, so here we are back for row 32. Now on row 32, we are going to be cutting off some of our black yarns from our previous row when we get to them. And we're also going to be moving one up as well. So for row 32, we are going to be working up our work. You are going to need to do two white. This is where we add in a black for four black. Cut off a black. <laughs> two dark blue. Move up your black five um, light brown cut off a black one black that's an add in black and then we have got three more brown one black and then 14 white so let me do that one again for you that is two white four black two dark blue five light brown one black three light brown one black and then 14 white. Right, so here we are with a row 35. Now you're going to need a, another light blue and a, another black. Right, so we are working down our work. We are going to need 15 white, one black, two light brown, one black, five light brown, one black, one dark blue, one black, three light blue, one black and two white. Right, so now we're on two row 34. Now on this row, we are going to be saying goodbye to a few balls of yarn. We are gonna be saying goodbye to this blue, a black, further up your project, we're going to say goodbye to that black and one of the browns now keep them to one side though because we'll be using them again working on the hearts are going up the side this going up your other side right right so your stitch count for row 34 are three white four light blue two black nine light brown and then 16 white you've now reached the end of video number one for video number two there will be a quick link up here there is also a link in the description box down below and there'll be another link at right at the end on the end screen now what i would suggest now is that you sew in the ends before starting that next video um if you're keeping up with the cow the next video will be coming out to you on tuesday so um have fun and i will speak to you and see you all very very soon to for now